Is that not the cutest thing you've ever seen? What is going on guys? I told you I would be back on my YouTube game and if you watched my video a few days ago you saw my recent leg day as well as a few updates that um, are going to be coming up in the near future here. Some traveling that I'm doing. I'm actually heading to the Arnold tomorrow morning at like 3 a.m. We're driving down from Wisconsin. If you're new to my channel I'm from Wisconsin and the Arnold Classic is actually in Columbus, Ohio. So we'll be traveling about seven hours down and um, I'm going to be taking you guys along. I'm going to show you guys the full experience as I know a lot of you guys are younger. Um, and you probably can't get to the Arnold even though you'd like to and kind of see what it's all about um, So I'm gonna try to do my best to do as much vlogging as I can of the whole trip um, So there'll be multiple videos that will be out from the Arnold so you guys can look forward to that and um, Yeah, so that's kind of something to look forward to then the following weekend I'm gonna be going to visit my buddy Manny um, who you guys know from the channel as well And then after that the next week I'm actually gonna be going to Colorado So a bunch of fun things coming up I won't go too in-depth into that because I did talk about it quite a bit in the last video But as you can see by the title of this video I'm gonna be talking about a beginners sort of basic push day or a chest and triceps day. Push day and chest and triceps is really pretty interchangeable to me. The only difference really in my sort of workouts would be adding in a lateral delt movement. So some lateral raises or something like that. But what you'll see today is going to be a true chest and triceps day, but you might hear it called a push day by some people. But I'm going to go over everything as far as the workout, as far as the reasoning behind each individual exercise selection, each individual rep range, and also just kind of talk to you guys about specific cues that I'm going over in my head, as well as everything in general, and if there's anything else that comes into mind, I'll talk about that as well. But going to kind of get into things right away here. Um, the first exercise that you're going to be doing on your chest and triceps day is going to be a barbell flat bench. And a barbell flat bench is going to be done in a lower rep range, so about four to six reps we're going to go with, and we're going to do five sets. So there's a lot of um, research out there that shows that performing a bench in a lower rep range like this with um, maximal force and maximal speed on the bar does recruit pretty much the whole pec itself. So being able to do something like this, even though you're not necessarily a power lifter or someone who's trying to add on strength, um, per se, but you're someone who's trying to add on the muscle size, this is still going to elicit you some results that you're looking for. So starting off five sets of four to six reps on barbell flat bench. And like I said, this has definitely been shown um, to recruit um, the majority of the pec. So um, there's also a lot of research showing that uh, the one rep max that you have correlates very well with um, how big your pecs are. So the higher one rep max you have, usually, um, typically, the bigger the pecs you have. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, that's going to be the first movement and I'm going to show you guys the screen on the screen um, an example of barbell bench so you can see a visual there. But that's going to be the first movement. So after that guys we're going to move on to a dumbbell incline bench. So a lot of lifters you'll see when they first start out they're going to do a lot of flat bench, a lot of flat bench. Um, and you'll notice that they tend to have a lagging upper chest, more by the clavicular head, so up by your collarbone. So that is what's going to really benefit you by doing an incline um, dumbbell or barbell movement. I personally like dumbbell better because you're able to fully shorten the pec. Um, well, not fully shorten the pec, but shorten the pec a bit more than you are on, on the barbell flat bench, being that the dumbbells are obviously independent of one another. So this we're going to work up a little bit higher in reps. We're going to do 8 to 10 reps, and we're going to do 3 sets. So since you already got a bunch of blood flow to the chest, you won't have to do as much volume. You can still take one set to kind of, I call them like a throwaway set to warm up and get the movement pattern down, but then we'll do three sets of eight to 10 reps. Um, so that's kind of a focus, like I said, simply because we want to make sure we're building up that upper chest and making sure that it's fully developed because that tends to be an area which is lagging in a lot of younger lifters and just lifters in general. So that's going to be the second movement. Like I said, three sets of eight to 10 on the dumbbell incline. And you wanna make sure you're at about a 45 degree angle. You don't wanna to be too high where it becomes more of a shoulder press, but you also don't wanna to be too low where it's more like a flat bench. So about 45 degrees is a good happy medium. After that, we're gonna move on to a cable pec fly. 
So cable pec flies are a great exercise because like I mentioned before, even though the dumbbells allow you to shorten the pec a little bit more, it doesn't allow you to fully shorten the pec, especially as you're moving up in weight and the dumbbells literally just get bigger in size. So you're able to kind of bring them a lot closer, but you're not actually able to touch your hands together like you are on a pec fly, um, a cable pec fly specifically. So what I have you doing for the cable pec flies would be a little bit higher reps. So we're going to do 10 to 12 reps with three sets. And you can do pec flies here, you can do a low pec fly, um, whatever is most comfortable for you. You're gonna see me performing like a decline or a low pec fly. And um, I personally just like this um, with the setting all the way up. And that's just preference. So you gotta kinda find what works best. But as long as you're able to fully shorten the pec and bring your hands all the way together, that's gonna benefit you a little bit more and help you finish off that chest um, and recruit a little bit more muscle fibers. Um, so that's kind of the main portion of the chest workout. After this, like I said, we're going to move into a tricep portion of the workout. And although we, you may have some people suggest that you do a close grip bench or another compound movement, a heavy compound movement to start off for your tricep work, I personally don't think that's needed because you're already recruiting um, a good amount of the triceps in your flat bench, especially if you're going heavy on that. So I like to start out with a dip variation. So you can either do a machine dip or you can do a body weight dip if you're able to perform that with proper form and you don't have any shoulder problems or anything like that. So I'm actually gonna show you the machine variation on the screen here, but if you do need something that is a little bit more assisted, you could definitely, um, or excuse me, if you do need something that's a little bit more challenging, you could definitely do a body weight dip variation instead of the machine. So either way is just fine. Um, the main thing that you're focusing on with the dip is the lateral head of the triceps. So your tricep has three heads. So making sure you're hitting all those individually, you're gonna recruit them on the bench and you're gonna recruit them on your compound movements where you're utilizing your triceps. Um, but you're really, really activating the lateral head on the dips. So like I said, there's three parts of the tricep, your lateral, medial, and long head of the tricep. So like I said, the lateral is gonna be hit by when we're hitting those dips. And then when we go to our next movement, which is going to be in the 10 to 12 rep range as well, we're gonna be doing an overhead extension, which is gonna hit the long head of the tricep. So on the long head of the tricep, that's something you wanna be hitting when you're focusing on anything overhead. Well, not you're not wanting to be hitting, you are hitting it when you're doing anything overhead. So anything like a dumbbell extension, which is what you're seeing me do, or a rope extension, or even a French press, which a lot of people call it, with a barbell overhead extension, any of those are gonna be isolating the long head of the tricep very well. So incorporating something overhead like that is definitely gonna make a difference. After that, so you have your dips, both 10 to 12 reps, and the overhead tricep extension, 10 to 12 reps as well. You can optionally add in a push down with either the rope, um, the V-bar or straight bar, any attachment you like. Um, and this is an optional, like I said. Since you're already recruiting um, the majority of the lateral head on your dip variation, you do not necessarily have to add in these push downs at the end, but let's say you have problems with your shoulders where you can't do dips, or you just wanna get in more volume for a specific body part, this would be something you could add in. Another thing about that is I did mention you could use the rope or any sort of attachment. Personally, I enjoy the, the straight bar or V-bar attachment over the rope, just simply because you're able to use more weight and use a greater load during the pushdowns, um, just based on how the attachment's set up. So that's just kind of my opinion on that, but hopefully this video helps you guys out. Hopefully you're able to apply this push day um, or chest and triceps day um, to your own workout split. And if you guys have questions on this, please leave them below. I would be happy to answer them. And if it's a good enough question where a lot of people can value from it, I'll definitely make a full video on it. So I'm gonna be doing more of these. I'm gonna do a pull day or a back and biceps day next and just show you guys what that would look like and kind of go over it um, as in depth as I just did here. So I wanna keep them a little bit more short and sweet. Um, just gotta kind of get a little bit more consistent with videos in general and hopefully you guys are enjoying it. So I will see you guys at the Arnold. If you're gonna be there, please comment below if you're gonna or shoot me a DM on Instagram. Um, I would love to meet up with as many people as we can. I will have a few Anklam Athletics hats and if you do come up and meet up with me, I'll definitely be throwing you some and um, you can support the brand. So hopefully I'll see you guys soon. Either way, thank you for watching. Please like the video, it helps out a ton, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, let me know if this video is helpful, guys, and if you like this style. Um, but yeah, have a great day. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out.